Okay, praise the Lord, everybody. Mm -hmm. um, my name is Pastor Anthony Menzel, and many of you, most of you know me. Um, I want to welcome you, start by welcoming you to the memorial service for my uncle, uh, Bob, and really appreciate all of you being here today. Uh, you see the cameras, we are transmitting uh, via YouTube. Uh, for people who, because of different situations, they can't be here. Um, I want to, of course, recognize the O'Brien family that my uncle lived with for 30 years, who are connecting from Queens via YouTube. Um, and I just want to thank all of you for being here today. Um, and I'm going to get start off by saying, this is a very hard service for me. It's one of the hardest services I've done. So I really appreciate your support. Um, I want to thank especially, and I'm, the service is in English. We usually have bilingual or translation or something, but um, the service is in English. Please, please the phones. Put them on vibrate. Um, but I do want to say one thing in Spanish for the people in my congregation who have come here today to help out. Okay. Yo quiero darle las gracias a todos de que tal vez no entienden tanto inglés, que vienen a un servicio en inglés para apoyar. Okay. Thank you so much. I want to thank all of um, you know the family and friends that have come, especially my sister who came from North Carolina. Uh, I want to thank, of course, my Aunt Marisol. You know, and I have notes, but we come from a, a tradition in our church that we flow in the Holy Spirit. So I, I kind of want to make people understand. Sometimes people say, oh, it's an uncle, it's not a big deal. In my job, they didn't give me bereavement days because, ah, it's not the parents, it's not your grandparents, it's not your children, okay? Growing up, I had a very small family. I had essentially, in addition to my parents and my sister, it was my grandmother's, my Aunt Marisol, her daughter, and my Uncle Bob. The only person who's left from the extended family is my Aunt Marisol. Okay, so yeah, I have other uncles and, and other people that I got to know as, as an adult and I love them very much. But the people who were there with me from the time I was born were those people. So this is a very, very big loss for me. Okay. Um, but in any case, I just want to welcome everybody and thank you for your support. I ask you to please sign the guest book before you leave. And um, the video of the service, we will edit it and you'll see why we're going to edit it. Um, our, our church YouTube channel is in process of being upgraded, but... Um, my chemistry, because I'm a chemistry teacher, that, that YouTube channel is where we're transmitting to. Um, it, it actually has the requirements that are needed for transmission, but later on, anybody who wants a link uh, can contact me or my family, and we can give you where the edited version of this service will be. Before I move on to an opening prayer, I do want to just iterate our COVID protocols. Um, because of Omicron, the church, our church currently has in place the following protocols. Uh, we do temp scan for temperatures at the door. Um, if you don't want to be scanned, we have an ear thermometer. Okay, So some people don't like being scanned, that's fine. The microphones have covers. Everybody who comes to speak gets a new cover. Um, unless, of course, you're like people who live together, it's not necessary. Um, the only person who cannot have a mask on is the person in the pulpit who's speaking. Uh, anybody else, everybody else be asked to wear masks. Um, and for mask breaks, because I know myself, 
It's hard to have a mask on for several hours. Um, you can go to the bathroom, right? When I went to the bathroom, I took off my mask. Also in the basement, if there's nobody there, you could take off your mask. And even if there's people there, there's like an exit, and that exit has like a little vestibule, and you can take off your mask there if you need to, okay? Because I'm aware that for some people that might be kind of hard to have a mask on for the whole service. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start off with an opening prayer. And I would like for everybody who can, I know some people for different health reasons may not be able to, but if you're able, if you could please stand up to show reverence for the Lord Jesus and for the memory of my uncle, Bob. Father God, I praise you that you're the God of all comfort. Hallelujah. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 to 4. And Lord God, I praise you when people ask me, are you okay? I say no, but I know I will be because Jesus Christ is still on the throne. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray today that you give us comfort. I pray that you give all of us who are going to speak and minister strength. And I pray that you would cover everybody who participates in some way in this service, whether it be in person, whether it be through the uh, online transmission or seeing the video after. Hallelujah. I just pray, Father God, that you would cover each and every one of us with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, now and always, in spirit, soul, and body, that each and every one of us, and I pray this for us and for all of our loved ones, all of our descendants, that each and every one of us would have not only the maximum blessing in this life, but would get to go to heaven to be with you forever. And I thank you and I praise you. I pray that everybody will be blessed for having participated in this service, especially you, Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, everybody should have a program. Normally, we don't follow a program in my church, but this is a special service. Um, so I asked, the, I felt from the Lord some songs. I put them on a song sheet. You can try and follow along. I'm going to let the spirit flow, so I don't know if I'm going to be perfect rhythm and that, you know, for everybody to lead everybody in song, but... Like I said, this death has been very hard for me. See, my uncle wasn't the kind of uncle who he just saw you every couple of years. He wasn't the kind of person who, you know, there's some, I, I've come to learn talking to other people that sometimes you have family members that they're very nice when they see you, but they're not really always aware of you or, or thinking about you. But my uncle, every birthday, every holiday, even when we lived in other states, my uncle never left Queens. When he came to America from Germany, he stayed in Queens for his whole life in New York. But even when we lived in other states like Ohio and Virginia, he always gave us gifts and was in touch with us. There was always a phone call. And um, I was going to share this later on, but I just feel in my spirit to share it now. When he was in the hospital and the cancer was basically eating away at him between, between cancer and COVID, and he wasn't talking to anybody on the phone anymore. It was my birthday. And so I called him because I wanted to talk to him, and I understood that he probably forgot it was my birthday, even though he always remembered it was my birthday. And he didn't pick up the phone. But as soon as I texted him saying, 
I just wanted to say hi because I always talk to you on my birthday. He immediately called. So, in any case, there is a big hole in my heart and in my family right now. But the songs I'm going to lead us in singing all talk about how the Lord Jesus turns those holes into something beautiful. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. It says, and we know all, that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called, are the called according to his purpose. And you know one thing? I know that when a Christian goes through something difficult, God will make us more able to minister to other people. Example, this week, uh, one of my students, someone who was like a second father to him, got killed in a car crash. And because of what I've gone through with my loved one's passing and this recent death, right, it makes me more empathetic, right? When you've never been through anything, you don't have the same empathy for people. Amen. So I already mentioned that God is the God of all comfort. Second Corinthians chapter one. I do want to say before I start to sing, prayer, a lot of people make prayer very difficult. But prayer can just be defined as communication with God. And when you sing a song to the Lord, you're essentially singing a prayer. Mm -hmm. yes. So these songs that I'm going to sing, these are prayers. So I ask you, if you're able, I know with the mask is hard, amen, but if you're able to stand and sing, you can. Be led by the Spirit as, as you can. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to go off a little bit in the Spirit. Um, but... Take my hand, precious Lord. Especially when we're going through hard times, it is important to have the Lord Jesus take our hand. And we can have him do that by drawing near to him, by praying and reading the Bible, which is God's word. John James 4, 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Hallelujah. So I'm going to go ahead and, and sing this song. Precious Lord, take, take my hand, lead me on. Let Stand. I am tired, I am weak, and I am warm through the storm and through the night. Precious Lord, and lead me home on days like today when my way grows dreary. Precious Lord. Lingering 
And when my life is all almost gone, at the river I will stand, guide my feet. Hold, hold my hand, take my hand, precious Lord, and lead me on at the river. Precious Lord, and lead me home. I see when bad things happen, like the passing on of my Uncle Bob even if I feel really sad. Like I said, I always remember that Jesus Christ is still on the throne. Next song, His Eyes on the Sparrow. My favorite stanza of that song has to do with remembering just that. And I like to sing this song saying, I sing because my soul is happy. Because when you have Jesus Christ in your life, even when you're sad, your soul can still be happy, and you always have hope because Jesus Christ is still on the throne. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm going to sing His Eyes on the Sparrow. You can join me as however you want. Whenever I am tempted, whenever clouds arise, When some give way to sighing, when hope within me dies, I draw the closer to God. From care he set me free. God, I is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. God, I is on the sparrow, and I know that Jesus is watching over you. And me praise you, Lord. I sing because my soul is happy. Thank you, Lord. I sing because my soul is free. God, I is on the sparrow. And I know that Jesus is watching. Yes, I know that Jesus is watching. Yes, I know that Jesus is watching over you and me. Praise you, Lord, I sing because my soul is happy. Thank 
you, Lord, I sing because my soul is free. God, I is on the sparrow, and I know that Jesus is watching. Yes, I know that Jesus is watching. Yes, I know that Jesus is watching over you and me. God. Praise the Lord. See, the next song, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. Because the same reason, Jesus Christ is still on the throne. Amen. I may not know when I will feel better, but I know the person, God, the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Lord Jesus, that God of all comfort, that will bless me to feel better. Amen. So, When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrow like sea below rose, what to say it is well it is well with my soul it is well with my soul it is well it is well Satan should buffet, though trial should come. Let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate. It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Before we finish our musical worship, I'm really blessed. To have wonderful children. Amen. And in our normal church services, Gabriella always sings. And she just wants to sing. She wants to participate. And it's not a normal church service, so she can't be on the piano today. But Gabriela, tu quiere cantar? You want to sing? She made this, I don't know if we can show it in the video, but she made this picture down here. Uh, for my uncle, and she was even praying for the service uh, the other day. I think it was yesterday because I, I took off work to work on the service. But see, in that picture, um, it's Uncle Bob saving her 
and destiny. And um, she, she's got in her mind that we're going to have another child. So it's her baby brother, which she always calls Freddie. But, um, but Gabriela, go ahead and sing. <sighs> This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Jesus is the light, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I will stop my feet and I will clap my hands and shout, shine. I will run around and I will cut my head and show shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Jesus is the light. I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus is the light. I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus is the light. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I will stop my feet and I will clap my hands and shout. Shout. I will run well and I will clap my hands and shout. Shout. I will clap my hands and I will stop my feet and shout. going to get us through hard times. Amen? Amen? The next song I'm going to sing is in honor of my dad, who has lost his brother. And it is one of his favorite Christian songs. And again, it tells us the most positive way of how to handle life in general. And I'm going to need her not to be on the piano. Okay, no piano today. Tomorrow, yes, but not today. Um, Tells us the most positive way of how to handle life in general, especially in hard times like times of grief. Amen? So I found the answer. Amen. I found the answer when I learned to pray with faith to guide me. I found my way. The sun is shining 
When I learn to pray, I was weak and weary. I had gone astray, walking in the darkness. I could not find the way, but then a light came shining. To lead me from despair All my sin forgiven And I was free from care I found the answer When I learned to pray With faith to guide me I found my way the sun is shining over me each day. I found the answer when I learned to pray. Here's part of the secret. Keep your Bible with you. Read it every day. Always count your blessings, always stop and pray. Learn to keep on believing, and Jesus will see you through. See to no contentment, and it will come to you. I found the answer. When I learn to pray, with faith to guide me, I found my way. The sun is shining over me this day. I found the answer when I learn. Let's sing that one more time. I found the answer when I learned to pray. With faith to guide me, I found my way. The sun is shining over me. When I learn to pray. Glory to the Lord. Praise the Lord. You all may be seated as we move on into the sermon. Hallelujah, Father God, we praise you. That when we get sad, you can bless us to get happy when we praise you, Lord God. Because in your presence, there's fullness of joy. Oh, hallelujah. We praise you and we thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now. My sermon and then my eulogy. Eulogy, for those of you who may not know exactly what it means, and I know growing up I didn't know what it meant, but if you know another language like Spanish, elogio, when you, cuando uno elogia a una persona, when you, that means you are complimenting them, you're speaking well of them. Okay, so saying kind words about them. But both my sermon and my eulogy have the same topic, and that's the legacy of my Uncle Bob. Because see, he left me and my family a legacy. And the sermon, I'm going to mention the Bible in both parts, but in the sermon, I want to talk about his spiritual legacy. 
know, my Uncle Bob always celebrated Christian holidays like Christmas and Easter. But when he started battling cancer about three and a half years ago, he became a man of prayer. He not only received prayer all the time, but he also asked me and the rest of the family to pray for other people in addition to him, including the medical personnel involved in his cancer treatment. I was so blessed. The day before he died, when my mother and father and I, we went to Queens, and you know with COVID, you can't go to the hospital, but when the person's terminal, sometimes they make an exception. So we waited outside the hospital for an hour in the cold. And then we waited an hour outside the unit and we could only see him through the window because it was a COVID room and New York state regulation does not allow you to go into a COVID room at this point in time. But one of the, the people from the doctor's office, one of the medical personnel, who had been involved in his cancer treatment. She said he was such a nice person to deal with. And I think that speaks volumes. Here you're going through something painful. Here you're going through something that some people, they get nasty. Even the nicest people can be nasty when they're in pain or they're struggling or they're facing death. But my Uncle Bob was still nice to people. <clears throat> So he became a man of prayer. And one thing that really blessed me is that he also repeatedly said that he was praying for us. And that's really a blessing because when you're sick and you're going through something, we all should have masks on, but in any case, unless you're in the pulpit, just for protection for everybody. In any case, he was praying for us. And a lot of people get caught up in their own problems. And they're not praying for other people. They just want prayer for themselves. But that wasn't my own problem. When he first got sick, I prayed the prayer of salvation with him. Because before he got sick, he wasn't that serious about his faith. The prayer of salvation is a prayer in which a person confesses his or her faith in Christ. The prayer of salvation I pray with my Uncle Bob is similar to the prayer on the back of the prayer card. Everybody have a prayer card? Okay. So I felt the Spirit lead me to be very intentional about the prayer that's put back here. Some people always just put Psalm 23 or Psalm 91 or, you know, I'm going to miss you or blah, blah, blah. No. Spiritual legacy. Even in death. And we know that when you believe in Jesus Christ and you try to follow him, death is just a transition. It's just a change of address. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 5, it tells us when you're absent from the body, you're present with the Lord. First Thessalonians 5.23 says that the human being, just like God, is one God in three persons. God the Father. God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. Reverend Luis, my dad wants the lights on. Um, the human being is made of three parts, which makes sense because we're made in the image of God. So it's spirit, soul, and body. So these cremains right here, and some people say, oh, Christians don't get cremated. Well, guess what? The Christians that died 2,000 years ago, that's all they are now. Right. right? Or if you died at sea and you're a Christian and they threw you over, that's it. That's all you are. So God in his miracle working power, when he makes your glorified body from your remains on this earth, he's going to know this piece of dust is over here and this piece of dust is over here. I'm going to bring it all together and I'm going to give this glorified body, put it together. Amen. Okay. So, this right here is just a shell. The spirit and the soul that make up the person 
My uncle by spirit and soul not here anymore. Amen. 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 It's very emotional for me. I drove over here with that urn in my car. It's very emotional. But it's just a comfort to know you're absent from the body, you're present with the Lord. So I say all of this because I'm going to give everybody the opportunity today to honor the Lord Jesus and the memory of my Uncle Bob by saying that prayer with me in a little bit. But there's some scriptures on here. That's why this is the sermon, and then I'm going to get into my eulogy later. But there's some scriptures on here, and Acts 17, 10 to 11 says, we should always make sure that our beliefs are based on the word of God. They're always based on the Bible. It's not based because, oh, Pastor Anthony is so nice to me, or he seems trustworthy. He doesn't make any money off the ministry, so he must be saying the right thing. No. Acts 17.10 says, Then the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. When they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. So we're going to make sure that what's on this card is true. So if we go to Romans 10, 9, and 10, as mentioned on the card, I'm going to start from verse 8. And it says here, but what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. So what this is the basis of Christian preaching right here, this passage. That's why my church, I repeat it over and over again. Amen. And every Sunday we're transmitting live to hundreds of people as well. So I don't know who's watching it, but in any case, this is the, the, the word on which our Christian preaching is based. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, I feel the presence of the Spirit of God. Those of you who are not into charismatic Pentecostal circles, sometimes the Spirit touches you and you start to shout. Amen? You might even start speaking in, in tongues. But in any case, I felt the presence of the Spirit of God. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's not something just that you think, you have to actually say it. And that's why I'm going to ask everybody a little bit to repeat with me when we say the prayer of salvation. I want to say this to you all, whether you're here or online. And share with you, I'm trained as a scientist, as well as a minister. In fact, my secular job with which I support my family is that of a high school science teacher. And as a scientist, one way that I look at my faith in Christ is based on facts. Amen. Right? Some people think that, oh, when you become religious, you have to disconnect your, your intellect. And as a scientist and... Uh, a minister, I don't believe that. It's a historical fact that Jesus of Nazareth existed. It's a historical fact that he was crucified. Just as much as it was a historical fact that George Washington was the first president of the United States. So if you are not, if you're not going to believe that Jesus of Nazareth walked this earth, then don't believe that George Washington was the first president of the United States. So it's also a fact that when Jesus of Nazareth was crucified, almost all of his followers abandoned him out of fear. In science, in one, one definition of a theory in science is the best explanation of the facts. And for me, the fact that many of those same followers who abandoned the Lord Jesus were soon risking their lives after the crucifixion and saying that he had been resurrected by God the Father from the dead is that Jesus Christ was resurrected from the dead. No other religious leader I know of has been resurrected from the dead. Okay? You know, and that resurrection shows me, it's proof that Jesus Christ is Lord. 
right? And based on the scriptures, and it's not in my notes, but I'll go there really quickly. Matthew 28, I believe it is, or Matthew, is it 18? It's Matthew 28. Yep, Matthew 28, 18, 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name. This is where we see the Holy Trinity. The name, singular, if you know from your grammar. So it's one name of the Father and the Son and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen? So that resurrection from the dead is confirmation. It's one of the confirmations for me. And there's others. But it's one of the confirmations that Jesus Christ is in fact Lord. And he rules over everything, including death. And that is part of our hope today, is that he rules over death. I tell you, folks, I am not afraid to die. I am not afraid to die. I have worked in situations where my life has been threatened. And I was single at the time, and so I didn't worry about having children. But when I was threatened, I would say to them, go ahead and kill me, send me to heaven early. Not afraid. That's when they looked at me and said, You're crazier than I am. Let me let me leave you alone. <laughs> right? But I'm afraid of two things probably physical pain and leaving my closest loved ones with the pain of a loss. I never want my parents to bury a child or a grandchild. That should not be. I don't want to leave my children without a father when they're too young. Those are the two things I just don't want to do. But me dying, going to be with Jesus Christ, that's a promotion. Amen. Yes. Amen? Yes. And I, I, I'm sad about my Uncle Bob because I'm going to miss him. And I don't know exactly when I'm going to see him again. When a loved one dies in Christ, it's not so much that you're you're, you're sad, like you're never going to see them again, but it's like you just miss them. I'm going to miss those phone calls. I, I, I'm going to miss those outings. You know? We used to go once a year to, before he got cancer, we used to go to uh, Manhattan, and we used to go to you know, do the whole tour, the tree, and we go to St. Patrick's Cathedral, and we go and see all the windows, walk all the way up, like, Park Avenue. And my uncle was such an artist. You're going to see some of his artwork. He was just so talented, and he was brilliant. Then we would go to a museum. A lot of times it would be the Museum of Modern Art, not Modern Art, the Museum, Metropolitan Museum. We did go to the Museum of Natural History a couple of times, but he was just so smart. And I just want to be next to him and absorb him, absorb what he would have to say, all his commentaries. You know, I'm going to miss that. When he got sick, my sister was so wonderful in arranging weekly phone calls with the family. And I tell you, I'm in ministry and I'm also a school teacher and I have a family. But people sometimes they would say to me, I want to meet with you, Pastor. And I say, this is Tuesday night. And I'm sorry, but I can't miss my call with my uncle. I'm not doing it. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I think there was one time somebody had like a real life-threatening emergency that I, I, I couldn't be part of the call. But other than that, it was like, that was my priority. I'm going to miss that. Anyway. So Jesus is Christ is Lord. Amen. Next passage on the prayer card is Acts 17 30. And it says, Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. See, folks, only believing that God the Father, the Son Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit exist does not save us. 
Just believing does not save you. James chapter 2 verse 18 says, But some will say you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe. Hallelujah. And tremble. So it's not just saying, well, I believe in God. Are you trying to follow Jesus Christ? So good thing is, repenting is just basically going away from what's bad and going towards what's good. We'll keep it simple. Amen? We're not going to be perfect. Yes. There's only two things God wants us to be perfect in. One is repenting and the other is loving other people. First John 1, 9 and 10 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And this is the good news. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Yes. So if you try and pretend like you're perfect, you're making God a liar, right? We're always going to have something wrong with our thoughts, our feelings. Even if what you say and do is, is looks perfect, something's not going to be right here or here. Okay. Matthew 5, 44, I'm going to throw this in there because that's really important about following Christ. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you more what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so. Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. This is the key I want to leave you all with. Forgiveness and trust are two different things. There will be people who hurt you and they never apologize and they're happy that they hurt you. Okay? I've been there. I'm not going to get into details because I could go on and on and on. They're going to be happy that they hurt you. But you know what? You don't forgive people for them. You forgive people for your own well-being. Amen. You don't want to carry that with you, that, that load. And so how do we act with that person who's hurt us and they haven't said they're sorry? Still be polite. Help them in any way you can. Pray for them as God leads. Even if the focus of our prayers and most of our energy goes toward helping our loved ones and friends and our other brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen? But if God puts on your heart, no, pray for that person. You pray for them. Amen? And have the attitude that you only want them to be judged if they refuse to stop following evil and follow good. Vengeance is mine, Romans 12, 19, says the Lord. I will repay. Amen? You don't have to worry about it. You do whatever you need to do, you know, to, to try and have something bad not happen again. And then, like, if it doesn't work out, let God do it. Then take care of it. So that's very important. And it, it helps us to be able to forgive people. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. The next passage is on the prayer card. Matthew 24, 13. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Once you say this prayer of salvation, you have to keep following the Lord Jesus in order to be right with God and go to heaven. It's not just I said a prayer one day and I'm fine. I can live any old kind of way I want. That's not how being a Christian works. I think probably one of the things I like most, and this is not to say I'm the best thing since life's bread, because if it weren't for the Lord Jesus helping me, I would have never been able to do what I'm about to say. 
One of the things I like most about my testimony as a Christian is that I've been a Christian since 1991, 30 years, and it's not one of those testimonies where the person says, well, I walked with Christ, I fell away, I came back, I walked back, I came back, back and forth, yo-yo up and down. No. I've had my struggles, I've had my hills and valleys, but I stayed with Jesus. Amen. Yes. And that's how it's supposed to be. Amen. John 16, 23 and 24 is mentioned on this prayer card. It says, and in that day you will ask me nothing. This is Jesus Christ at the Last Supper. Moses, sir, surely I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. As we mentioned, prayer can be defined as communication with God. So the biblical form of asking when you're, when you're engaged in prayer, you can praise the Lord Jesus, you can praise the Holy Spirit, you can praise the Father. But when you're asking, you're supposed to ask the Father in Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's why that's that's why we have I ask these things in Jesus Christ's name. Last thing I want to say before we do say this prayer of salvation. Just like I said, you know, Muhammad hasn't resurrected from the dead. Buddha hasn't resurrected from the dead. None of these religious leaders, none of these people resurrected from the dead. Okay. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The only way to initiate a connection with God, with the Holy Trinity, is through belief in Jesus Christ. Amen. So, what I would like to do at this point in the service is to honor my Uncle Bob, amen, by affirming or reaffirming our faith in Jesus Christ. Okay. So, I'm just going to read this prayer. And what's great about this, guess what? If in the future you want to share with somebody else how to receive the Lord, you have this prayer card, right? If God puts on your heart, no, you need to pray with somebody to receive the Lord. Guess what? You have a little short prayer you can pray with them Amen. in your hand. And that's a gift. That's a gift I feel. That's a gift I feel that my Uncle Bob is getting to give everybody today. Okay, so if y'all could, could repeat after me from the heart, those of you who feel led to do so, because nobody's going to force anybody to do anything, obviously, and it has to be from the heart or it doesn't mean anything, and you have to keep following Christ after you say this prayer or it doesn't mean anything, amen? But those of you who would like to repeat after me, please repeat with me for our prayer of salvation. Father God, Father God based on Romans 10, based on Romans 10, 9 to 10. 9 to 10. I, believe I believe with all my heart, with all my heart that you raised, that you raised Jesus, Christ Jesus Christ from the dead. From the dead. And, Lord Jesus, and Lord Jesus, I accept you, I accept you as, my Lord. as my Lord. Father, Father based on Acts 17.30, I ask you to forgive me for my mistakes and based on Matthew to bless me to follow you forever so that I can always be with you based on John 16 23 to 24 I ask these things in Jesus Christ's name Amen Hallelujah. I just feel the presence of the Spirit of God. Now, if anybody would like a free Bible, we're running low on English Bibles, but we do have, we will order them. Um, this church, Abundant Love Christian Church, we're not perfect love. Being perfect is too much stress for me. But we do try to be abundant love. 
Amen. So if you do need a free Bible, uh, feel free to let me know after service. Um, those of you who are watching YouTube Live or a video of the service, you can also text us at 201-572-6598. That's 201-572-6598. Also prayer requests. And I'm going to talk about a prayer. I'm going to give you all a copy of it. But it was a prayer that was inspired by... Inspired by what? <laughs> inspired by... What my Uncle Bob was going through. And um, it's a prayer for healing for the spirit, soul, and body. So, um, you know, we're here to pray for people. We're here to, to be nice to people and, and try and show the love of Jesus Christ. So many people have been treated badly by different religious organizations. And that's really not not what we're all about. Amen. Amen. One thing about my Uncle Bob, he wasn't perfect, but he was real. Amen. He was truly real. So, um, any case, oh, actually, I have notes here. I'm I'm trying to follow these notes because I'm trying to keep it together. Um, we will hand out. This is time. This is Gabriela's microphone, and I, if she's sick with something, I'm going to be sick with it too, so I don't care. Um, but, uh, um, Brother Franklin, if you could hand this out to everybody. Before we go on to something else, just wanted to hand this out. This is a prayer I was talking to you about. It's called God's Fast Acting Vitamins. Hallelujah. And it's a prayer that I prayed for my Uncle Bob during the last weeks of his life. And I prayed similar prayers for him throughout his illness. The Holy Spirit used his illness to create a sense of urgency in me to formalize this prayer. And it's a prayer for spiritual, emotional, and physical well-being. You know, especially with this pandemic. You know, maybe some of you think, oh, this whole mass thing is, is extra or whatever. This last Omicron round of COVID, we had so many people in our church battling COVID, myself included. And one of the testimonies of this church is up to now is that nobody has been able to say, I came to church and I got COVID because I came to church. Amen. That's why we've been very strict. We were a little bit looser saying you could sit in the seats and not, not have the mask until you leave, go, you know, if you have to go up and down the aisle, you put your mask on, whatever. But that's... You know, that's why we got to have, we got strict for a little bit. We'll see what as the numbers go down, when that changes and everything like that. But for right now, that's why we're there. But um, with this pandemic, this Bible-based prayer has been a blessing to me. And I pray that it will be a blessing to you. And you, it, on the prayer, it says how you can find a video of it, the prayer, on the YouTube channel for Abundant Love Christian Church. You go to YouTube, you search for God's Fast Acting Vitamins. It comes right up. And currently, see this is part of Uncle Bob's legacy. And you know, sometimes you don't know how God's going to use you. Amen. You may think, oh, who am I? How is God using me? But by him being a person who's receiving prayer, by him being someone who becomes a man of prayer, that inspired me. And now I'm using this prayer to pray for at least 70 people every day. I can count on my hands since I wrote this prayer at the beginning of, well, I was, I was diagnosed with COVID for the second time. I call it COVID, double COVID, because I had it double two times. Um, you know, I was... I, and how God will work even when you're down. Even when I was sick. He inspired me. Write this, you know, finalize this prayer. 
Something short but biblical covers everything. Amen? So that urgency, and my, my uncle was so sick, I said, I, I've got to do this. I've got to really be in, in prayer every day. I've got to be covering everybody with the blood of Jesus every day. That, that was really a blessing. So I hope this will be a blessing to, to people Amen. here Amen. and help you to be able to focus your prayer. As for me, this is taking me 70 people. I'm covering 70 people literally in 10 minutes. 10 minutes a day, covering you with the blood of Jesus. Spirit, soul, and body. Somebody is severely depressed because I have people on the list like that. They don't want to leave their room. I got people who are suicidal. I got people who are battling cancer. I got people who are battling all kinds of different things. Now, um, before I go on to my eulogy, this is where I thought we were going and weren't. We're going to watch a video with photos of my uncle's life and artwork. Music has not been included due to the solemn nature of this service. If you are participating via YouTube Live, I don't know if we can shift the camera that way. I hope you can see this video. If you can't, you can come back into the service in 27 minutes and 32 seconds. Amen? I know exactly how long this video is. And that's how long the video lasts. What I'm going to do is um, eventually edit this service. So this part will probably be edited out. If for family and close friends, we can probably send you a copy of this video for free, uh, probably via flash drive. And anybody else who wants a copy, we'll try and send it to you too. So um, without further ado, I'm going to take a little emotional, spiritual break for my eulogy, and we're gonna play this video. I hope everybody's blessed to see this, and just look at his, his talent as well as him as a person. It, it's just astounding. That's my dad and my uncle. The little one's my uncle. That's my girlfriend. That's my
That's my sister. That's my nephew, my oldest nephew, his great nephew. That's the family he lived with for 30 years.
this is where his artwork starts. All of these are things he made by hand.
Yeah, he made me nutcrackers. Those nutcrackers are made by him. One is a minister and one is a teacher. Oh. Made all of those pieces for the O'Briens. He worked in wood, metal, all kinds of synthetic, different media. It's extremely, extremely talented. That's in stone. They said that's his self portrait. He liked to decorate the windows and where he lived. Love snowman. drawings and paintings.
her house. Yeah. We love you too. We painted that. That's my mom. We painted my mom. That one he made for me. That's my favorite. A lot of those ornaments and stuff he made. He always liked to decorate the Christmas tree for different holidays. had a, a gallery talking about his gallery that he had in Queens for many years. Won awards for his art. last pieces he did that he won awards for. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, now I'm going to go on to my eulogy, starting off the eulogy so that I can give up the microphone to other people. As you can see, there's a lot of people who want to speak um, and should speak, and I do also want to acknowledge, before I forget, um, my Aunt Margaret in Germany, who I believe will be watching this either as a video or as if she's not on YouTube Live right now, and um, my Uncle John, who is in Oregon. If I've forgotten anybody, please charge it to my head and not my heart. Um, but my Uncle Bob's legacy, there's three things I want to mention. His amazing artistic talent, you could see that. And part of his legacy was to leave me with a greater appreciation of art, which has enriched my life. And what every piece of art that he created, whether I get to keep it or just see it, is a treasure to me. He was primarily a carver of wood and miniatures, but he worked in so many different media, like you can see, even stone. He painted and painted on different media, including wood as well as canvas. He made things out of even synthetic materials, even including styrofoam. He drew on wood, on paper, and this did not include his jewelry, but he also made jewelry, including out of precious metals. You know, master aspects of interior design is shown by the window that he would decorate the Christmas tree. And I'm just astounded by the range of media he mastered. Everything he made was intricate and beautiful. You see all of the like the fur on the bears and the, the skin on the fish, and it's just it's just amazing. Um
One of the ways he showed his love for all of us in the family was making things for us. Even when he was so sick, he would just about always make homemade gifts for each of us. That family of snowmen, that was his last gift to us. You know, somebody who's so sick battling cancer could have said, I can't do it this year. But he took the time. It's not going to a store and buying you a shirt or giving you a gift certificate. It's nice to be thought of that way, of course, but he did something special. And he took the time. To make actually a hand cart, a hand painted snowman for everyone in the family. And not just not just for me and my sister, but for everybody. My mom, my dad, my kids, my sister's kids, her husband. He embodied Romans 12, 6 to 8. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. In prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality. So one thing was his art. And his generosity. Because with Uncle Bob, it was about the time. He gave you his time. Another legacy he left me, I already mentioned, was his intellectual brilliance. Talked about how we would meet in Manhattan before he got sick. And he spoke like someone who had a doctorate degree. He'd take you around the museum and he'd explain those pieces you see there, like the, the Native American. That is from a certain tribe, from a certain time period, the night is from a certain time period. It's not just a little person that he just configured in his mind. So, even though he only had a, an associate's degree, he spoke like someone who had a doctorate. And his brilliant mind reminds me of the passage in Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled, and they realized they had been with Jesus. Amen. So the religious leaders are looking at the apostles and realizing, I'm not going to read the rest of the passage, but they realize, wow, they have God's anointing on them. And I tell you, just as with the apostles, human titles can supplement God's empowerment or anointing, but no degree can be the basis of God-given talents. A lot of people have degrees in art, couldn't strike a candle to uh, what my uncle could do. And so one thing that he taught me is we should be open to receive from everyone because God created all of us in the womb and gave us gifts when he created us. Psalm 139, 13 to 14 for you form my inward parts. You cover me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. That's why my Uncle Bob did not need an art degree to be such an incredible artist. God created him with incredible artistic talent and intelligence. The last thing I want to say in my eulogy is that the most important legacy my Uncle Bob left me was steadfast, constant love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8. The first sentence of that verse, I can go on with the rest of it, but I don't need to. Love never fails. Amen. 
You know, my, mom, my Uncle Bob sometimes had a rough exterior with other people. I'm not, sometimes people die and people try and pretend, oh, this person was an angel. I'm not one of those people. But I tell you, my sister, Harold Jr., the son of my Uncle Bob's dear friends, Harold and Lori, that you saw in the video, with whom he lived for 30 years, and I, were like his children in many ways. In my life personally, he may have been rough with some other people, but for me, and what I've seen with my sister Valerie and Harold Jr., he was always loving. I can never say that he was mean to me or hurtful. He's always been nice to my, from what I see anyway. My brother-in-law, Gerd, my wife, Maria, always nice. He's always loving to his great nephews, Parker and Hunter, my sister's sons, and his great nieces, Destiny and Gabriela, were my daughters. So, that love, that's a legacy to me. And it's something I want to take away and apply. You know, because sometimes just, just being nice to people, they say in John 13, I think it's 34 to 35, they're going to know we're Christians by our love. Mm -hmm. You can know a lot of scriptures, folks. But if you don't live them, it doesn't mean a hill of beans. So Matthew 18, 5, it's a scripture that reminds me of him. Whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember Uncle Bob sometimes telling stories of some children who took art classes at the Alliance of Queens Artists that annoyed him. But he never acted like that with me. And I never saw him or heard of him acting like that with the rest of the younger people in the family. He challenged us and shared his incredibly vast knowledge with us, but he was always glad to see us and spend time with us. And that is an example of how we should treat those who are younger than us, including the children in our lives. His love of animals reminds me of his love of children. It was constant, consistent, and tender, and it was reflective of how God left us the earth to take care of it instead of to abuse it. Genesis 2.15, then the Lord took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. So I'm gonna pray at the end of the service as a gift to everybody that we could even be better at loving other people especially the vulnerable, like children and animals, like my Uncle Bob was. Amen. Amen. I'm going to finish this eulogy, then you can listen to some other people. But the day after he died, I don't listen to secular music very often. The day after he died, I felt in my spirit this song, and I began to listen to it over and over again. I changed the lyrics a little bit to match what I've been going through. Of course, I love how the second stanza mentions Jesus. So it's not totally secular. But this, this really hits home for me. Um... See, the chorus says, I always thought I'd see you again. And I know that, I, God willing, I see him in heaven, but I always thought I'd see him again down here on earth. I always had that sense I was going to see him again. And I can get to, and maybe it's cliche, but folks, I'm so grateful. <laughs> I'm so grateful I took time to spend time with him while he was here. Because you don't give flowers to people when they're dead. 
give the flowers while they're here. Make them feel you love them while, you, while they're here. So there's that. Of course, I love the second stanza with Jesus. And the third stanza mentions the cold wind blowing. And you know what? That reminds me of that day my parents and I stood outside at a hospital in Queens for an hour. Because we weren't going to leave without seeing. The phone calls, you know, all throughout my life. And of course now, I'm just trying to pick up the pieces. And of course missing him. So I'm gonna do this rendition of this song the best I can. And then we're gonna move on to the additional eulogies. Just yesterday noon, they let me know you were gone. Uncle Bob, the COVID put the final end to you. I walked out this morning and I sang out this song. I just don't remember who to send it to. Lord, I seen fire and I seen rain. I seen sunny days that I thought would never end. I seen lonely times when I could not find a friend But I always thought that I'd see you again Please look down on me, Jesus Please help me make a stand Please see me through another day My body aching and my time is at hand and I won't make it any other way. Lord, I seen fire and I seen rain. I seen sunny days that I thought would never end. I seen lonely times when I could not find a friend. But I always thought that I'd see you again. Been walking my mind to an easy time, my back turned toward the sun. Lord, know when the cold wind blows, it'll turn your head around. There were hours of time on the telephone line to talk about things to come. Now it's dreams and flying machines, pieces on the ground. Lord, I seen fire and I seen rain. I seen sunny days that I thought would never end. I seen lonely times when I could not find a friend. But I always thought that I'd see you, Uncle Bob, one more time again. Yes, I always thought that I'd see you again. So, praise the Lord. Now we'll have a series of people give additional eulogies in honor of my uncle. Each person will get a new microphone cover as part of our church's protocols for COVID. I ask when each person finishes his or her words honoring my uncle Bob, that he or she gives the microphone back to me so that I can call the next person. Um, the first person, which is in the bulletin, um, to honor is my dad, um, Bill Menzel. Thank you. 
fast dancing. Can everybody hear me here? Just keep it close to your face. Like this? Yeah. Well, thank you all for coming. You're watching on YouTube or whatever channel. I'm sure my brother and my mother are proud of the fine service that Pastor Anthony has presented. And we'll finish up with you. And I'm sure that they can feel the love that's in this church tonight which is remarkable and much appreciated. And I thank you all for being here. I've been crying a lot in the past few weeks. First because of Bob's illness, and then for his death. But I know that those tears are for me, for my loss. Bob is at peace, and beyond pain and beyond fear, it is we who are suffering. The sorrow, how our cancer decimated him and ended his marvelous sculpting. Bob signed a DNR, not resuscitated. He was ready to join our mother. Okay, so he was a tough guy. He didn't take a lot of crap from anybody. All his life made his decision. And he's in that little urn right there. His ashes. That's his ashes. But his spirit and his soul is up there somewhere, right? Yes. In our hearts. In all those sculptures. I want to give you a little bit of background. Bob was a miracle baby. Bob and I and my mother came to the United States when he was two and I was ten. We were both orphanage before we came. We lived in orphanages and we were stateless because West Germany in those days did not recognize refugees from East Germany as citizens. So Bob and I were never Germans. We were born there, but we were never Germans. We became Americans. And proud to be. Bob was a patriot and loved this country. He joined me in demonstration to support our troops during the Vietnam War. He always supported our military and our police and people like Reagan. And he was proud of my service in Vietnam. Uh, he could not go into the military because when he was about four, he was struck by a car and suffered serious injuries to his, his skull. He flew into the air and crashed into the concrete miraculously recovered with just a scar on his forehead. Mm -hmm. But he struggled with thyroid problems and he had serious asthma most of his life. That excluded him from military service. But he loved this country. And he supported our troops. Bob went to the High School of Art and Design in Manhattan, just like I had. I went to high school and design, but it didn't happen. But he did better than I, and he was a much better artist. And after graduating from Queens College, he worked on Wall Street briefly, but he did not like the culture. And being the kind of guy he was, he didn't want to take a lot of crap, and he left. So Bob loved animals. And you can see that in the slideshow you just saw, right? We saw him with his Dachshund Woody, with the White Terrier Charlie, or with the Yorkie, with his Valerie's dog, Ginger. Ginger. He lived his entire life in Queens, and his favorite place was the zoo at Flushing Meadows. Uh, okay, buddy. I know you got somebody looking for you. But he asked that this 
his ashes be spread at that zoo. And we will be doing that in the spring. Um, we will carry out that wish. Bob was the director of the Alliance of Queens Artists, which at its height has several hundred members, for about 11 years. And it was a successful organization until the recession of 2008, 2009, when the funding dried up. But um, at AQA, he was also an art teacher. He helped a lot of kids develop their talents. And after AQA folded, he became an independent artist for the rest of his life. He was blessed with, to be living with his friends, who loved him dearly. That's Lori and Harold O'Brien and their son, Harold Cunha, as Anthony already mentioned. I want to thank them for their many kindnesses, particularly when he got very ill in his battle with cancer for the last three years. Bob was a wonderful storyteller and knew a lot about history, as Anthony already mentioned, cinema, believe it or not. He knew all about cinema, science fiction, politics, philosophy, art. I don't know where the hell he learned all this stuff, but he did. Uh, he knew about New York's museums, and he would regale us for hours and make us laugh. And he had a sharp sense of humor. He loved to share cartoons and puns and funny photos. And thanks to Valerie, my daughter, we had the weekly conference calls that Anthony has mentioned. And we all came to appreciate Bob's wit, wisdom, and wide range of knowledge. I was fortunate that ever since I came back to the East Coast in 91, I would spend at least once a month a lunch with them, or a dinner with them, or go someplace with them. So at least once a month. So that was great. Bob's passion for truth are reflected in his art, and you can see in the slideshow sculptures and paintings that cover a wide range of interests from medieval knights and fierce Indian warriors to centuries news and triumphant angels and curious snowmen and hungry bears. And Bob enjoyed making those carvings. It was his life. He poured all his passion and love into those carvings. But he shared some of that with us as well. And he won some awards and competitions. You can see all these and more on R.H. Menzel Collectible, collect, collectible.com, which is a website that I established for him a long time ago. Um, we will be establishing the Robert H. Menzel Memorial Award for Miniatures with the uh, Miniature Engraving Society of Washington, D.C. I don't know if you get that up there. The first award will be this year, this spring. I will end by saying that I like to remember Bob as my baby brother. Scrooge on a Christmas carol. 
like at 12 o'clock at night or 1 o'clock in the morning. I loved him. The next person to speak is um, Reverend Mary Mansell, his sister-in-law. Because there's so many gifts. We've been married for so many years. And every birthday, every occasion, he carved something for us. And I want to thank God today that he used me for his salvation. I want to thank God that for three and a half years, suffering from pancreatic cancer, he never had pain. And I want to thank God because he's in a better place than we are with Jesus and his mom. And I want to thank God that if we follow him and obey him, we all be together forever. Thank you, Jesus, for my brother and for the opportunity that you gave me to help him with my prayer. Man. The next person now, we're going to additional people who want to speak. And um, this is coming from her. Um, his great niece, Gabriela, wants to say something. Then Uncle Bob was so special to me that he was my favorite uncle. And he made the best things in the whole world. Snowmans, gifts of snowmans. He just made a lot of snowmans. He made a lot of things that were special. He gave them to all of our family. And every time we loved him and had calls with him. And 
me. I gave him a lot of kisses and a call to say goodbye before we were done. What can be said after Pastor's eulogy that spoke so beautifully of his uncle that he really loved, and my father-in-law, Bill Mansell, words for his baby brother. You know, since I came into the family, Bob accepted me into the family. Um, he was witty, he was sarcastic, he was funny, and he was a New Yorker just like I am and Bill, and we would see eye to eye. And I liked his wit. He didn't play, he didn't fake, and he wasn't phony, and he wasn't a hypocrite. What he thought, he said it. And he was just a special person that when you spoke to him, you know you were speaking to someone who was very smart very open and very caring and like they, he lived in Queens his whole life and he loved Queens. I remember going to Connie's. He would usually eat the same meal. He's just like me. When we like one thing, we stick to it. And he would say, they just make it right and he would like it. And I remember going with him to New York, like our family said, we would go to New York at least once a year since I came, whether it be Rock Center, uh, burger place. But one thing that stood with me, that like Mary said, he might have not been a believer for many years, but when he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, he believed. And in my own trial, he would text me sometimes and say, I'm praying for you, Maria. How are you feeling? And we would stay connected in this group chat where he would send us funny pictures. I don't know where he would find them. And then since I'm kind of similar like him, I would find old pictures of their toys that they play with and then Bob would start on and send me like, I don't know, like 40 pictures sometimes and Bill would say, I don't know where he gets the time to send these pictures, but he really loved us and he, Bill and Bob never had a dad and when he met my daughter, Anthony adopted Destiny into his heart as his daughter. He always gave her this kind and lovingness because, you know, maybe he never said it, but he knew what it felt to come from a single mom. And he always treated her so kindly and to, to Gabriela as well. That's why Gabriela came and spoke. No one told Gabriela to do that. She just came in with her heart of hearts that she has. And she says that she's going to be an artist like him. So, but Bob was very special. And the last few weeks, I remember his last few text messages where um, Valerie's younger son was going to a tournament and she was sharing the pictures of the hotel and all the events they were going to go to. And Bob was already really, really, really not doing well. He sent a text and he said, live life to the fullest, guys. You have to live your life. You have to enjoy it. I remember those text messages. I don't have the text message on me right now, but... He told each and every one of us to enjoy basically every day. You have to, we all have to stop worrying about what people say, what people think about you, and wasting time angry with people because we never know when it's going to be that last goodbye. And it was very special for my husband, Pastor Anthony, when it was his birthday. And Uncle Bob wasn't texting us as much anymore because it was getting harder for him to do things. And my husband texted him and he said to him, it's my birthday, Uncle Bob. And he called him immediately and Bob could hardly speak anymore at that point. But he made it a point to call his nephew on his birthday and show that love. And many of us have family members here. We don't call, we don't talk, or you're in a relationship with someone and you get angry at them and you want to give up and throw the towel. Well... We only have this one life to live in this earth, but we'll have a heavenly life. Don't waste your time in this, heaven, in this place angry at someone because you never know 
when you're going to see them again or talk to them because the last time I saw Bob was at Connie's almost three years ago for that annual Christmas dinner and we wanted to see him so many times and we couldn't because Bob didn't want to be exposed to COVID-19 and he was worried. He was, he was medically fragile, immunocompromised, but we always were able to talk to him weekly weekly. I finish work at 7 o'clock and I will go downstairs or Valerie will call me on the phone and we will share in the time because it was a special time because even though we were far away in the distance, we could still be close to that phone call and that love that you could give someone even if they're far away in another country. God wants us to be united in the love because love is what covers a multitude of sins and I just want to share a word that the Lord um, gave me for the family, for all our family and those who have lost family members. The Lord says in Matthew 5, 4, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And I know that the Lord Jesus Christ is comforting my family and may be comforting some of you who have lost loved ones as well because God never leaves us. He's always with us. We just have to draw near to him like James 4, 8 tells us. If we're drawing near to him, he is faithful to draw near to us. And I just want to pour out a blessing to my wonderful father-in-law. That's not just my father-in-law, that's my father right there. I never had a father. This man is a blessing. This man, the way he loves my grand, my kids, the way he plays with Gabriela, he was mourning and he was running all over the house. I was upstairs working virtual and all I heard was footsteps running. And I said, that's grandpa playing with Gabriela. He's a wonderful man my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law, and my husband. And we are very blessed that you could come here and share this time with us in mourning. Thank you, and God bless you all. Um, before I call my sister, his niece to come up and give the final eulogy. I'm Destiny. not. Destiny, you want to come up? See, I don't try and push, I don't try to force people to do things, but you wanted to say some words? Come on up. Now? Yeah, this is your time. Because then it's, then it's uh, Titi Valerie's turn, and then we're going to wrap things up. I wanted to say a few words to honor Uncle Bob. So, like my mom said, growing up I never really had a lot of male figures, especially grandparents, like male grandparents. But when Pastor Anthony had married my mom, I finally had a grandpa in my life. And although Uncle Bob wasn't my grandpa like Bill is, he always felt like he was one to me. Because we would call him, like they said, every week on like Tuesdays or Wednesdays, and he would always make me the most pretty sculptures. Um, and I know that he didn't have any kids growing up, but I know that he loved spending time with me and my sister. Um, and because me and Gabby always had that type of connection with him. And I thought that he was a very amazing person, and I'm glad to have known him for these few years. Um, and having um, my Grandpa Bill and Uncle Bob um, there, and of course um, Pastor Anthony as my dad, they're all very important male figures in my life um, to truly show me how a man should treat me since I didn't grow up with um, one for a few years. and. Um, I have no doubt that their mom was amazing to um, raise such great boys. And I'm grateful for the times that I spent with him, and I cannot wait to see him in heaven one day. Okay, so my sister, I, I don't know. She is an amazing speaker. She actually has her own 
coaching firm. So I'm sure, I left her for last because I'm like, I knew, I know she's going to be amazing. So, um, Valerie? In my words. I want to thank all of you for being here and showing your love to my family. And I want to thank the O'Briens because they so blessed our family by the way they loved my Uncle Bob. I don't know many people who have friends that dear and wonderful. They were so good to him. his family, the way he loves us, the way he loved his brother. We can learn from that. I wish everyone had that example in their life of true devotion. You know, it takes time and effort to reach out to people and make time for them and go three-hour drives to go see someone, just to have lunch, just to touch base. That's what my dad would do all the time. I could not be more blessed to be in this family. And I'm so grateful for that. And it's because of my dad that I have all these memories of my uncle. Because he always made sure that we were connected. I hope you do that for your loved ones. I hope you do that for your friends. When someone crosses your mind or you think of them, send them a text, call them, make a lunch date. Those moments are so precious. And like Anthony said, I wish I had more of them now. But I'm so grateful for the ones I did have. And I want to thank my wonderful brother for this beautiful, beautiful service. I don't even know how to follow all of this up, right? How can I possibly talk what anyone else has said? But he puts so much of his heart and love and passion and dedication into this service. The way he sang, the beauty of his soul shining. So I want to thank you for that. Because that was a gift. Just like my dad was a gift. And my mom my aunt, and my nieces, and my sister-in-law, and my husband, and my sons. We're a small family. We have amazing love. And that's the greatest gift we can give one another. So you know, a true artist sees the world differently. They see beauty and details that others don't. It's like we see everything in color, and the rest of us just see it in black and white. My Uncle Bob was a true artist, an intellectual, as they've said. His mind was as brilliant as his talent. And he was never a trained artist. So that is a gift from God. It's supernatural. And what you can't tell from these pictures is his carvings are tiny. How he did that, we're always like in awe of him. How he could carve that out of wood or metal or whatever medium it was. They're tiny little figures with the smallest little details. You know, he just saw the teeniest, tiniest, minute little details in life and celebrated them. And like Michelangelo, when he was carving things, just got rid of whatever didn't belong. Right? I admired how much he knew about animals and nature and history and science. He was a true Renaissance man. That's how I saw it. And 
when my grandmother Omi passed, and we were all in the hospital around her bedside. And we were so upset, I remember Anthony and I were so upset. And Uncle Bob was so comforting. I mean, his love just poured over us. And then there was another time, probably about a year ago, when I was really upset about something. And he was so kind to me. You know, he could be sarcastic and have wicked dark sense of humor, but under that tough New Yorker persona, he had a gentle and kind heart, a pure heart. My Uncle Bob loved dogs. He loved Trader Joe's, coins, mystery, witty cartoons, Scrooge, penguin hockey. TV shows like The Walking Dead and American Pickers, sci-fi authors like Philip K. Dick and Richard Matheson. He loved good food and good conversation, and his favorite delis and bakeries and Conleys and I think it was Shepherd's Pie he loved to eat. An old time, this old timey toy and hobby shop that he used to love to go to. He was crazy about Halloween and loved to dress up and goof on all the trick-or-treaters. That was one of the highlights of his year. And as you saw, he made beautiful window decorations, all the different seasons. And his affection for animals was unparalleled. He deeply loved animals, and they loved him right back. <laughs> I think that speaks volumes about his character. Because ans animals sense goodness. He was always telling us stories about Bootsy, and I think we saw Bootsy in one of the pictures, the sweet neighborhood cat that he sort of adopted, and all the animals and birds that used to frequent his doorstep, and he would feed them. He was so intelligent that incompetence and idiotic behavior drove him nuts. <laughs> My husband Gerd likes to say, I ain't got time for stupid. And I think Uncle Bob believed in that motto, too. Gerd, Parker, Hunter, and I especially enjoyed his humor. Thanks to my amazing dad, we all will be able to treasure all of those fond memories that we have of him meeting up with him in New York, walking around the Met and the other museums like they spoke about, and listening to his jokes. When he got sick, Uncle Bob sent me a far side cartoon of a dog biting this huge heel of a, looked like a dinosaur, but it was actually Godzilla. And the caption read, Toby versus Godzilla. And he said to me, I'm Toby. I kept that on my, as my screensaver on my phone for a long time in solidarity, uniting in his fight. I so admired the love he had for his friends and animals and the way he fought the past three plus years. You see, he didn't want sympathy. He never wanted us to say, I'm sorry. He wanted us to be hopeful and upbeat. And I think we can learn from that as well. Because he faced the biggest battle in his life with courage and dignity and strength and not pitying himself. And he fought the good fought by rarely letting us see his suffering and his pain. Close to the end, he sent us a text that every day he had and would have was a miracle. And when I passed that on to all of my church friends who had been praying for him, they were so touched by his words. They commented on what a beautiful soul and spirit he had. When I told him that, he said he hoped he inspired them. And I assured him that he had. It made me think that in his quiet way, he was hoping to inspire us and educate others with his art, teach us something about history and other peoples and things that he thought were important. That he was trying to tell us something and share his commentary with the world. I'm so incredibly grateful that we have his statues and paintings and 
Easter eggs and Christmas ornaments because he left a little piece of his love and his soul with all of us. And the other thing they didn't mention is when he gave you a gift, there was so much thought behind it. He really cared. He gave you a gift that was applicable to you or a joke he thought of that you thought would work for you or it was thoughtful in his kindness and in his love. And I'm so very grateful that he opened up his eyes just long enough to see my mom, my dad, and Anthony through that window in the ICU. Because I think one of the last things he saw was how much they cared and loved about loved him. <laughs> Would give anything to have been there. heard the following lyrics on a TV show that would make Uncle Bob roll his eyes. And I thought they were beautiful. Because even though all of us are filled with sadness, it comforts me that he isn't suffering anymore. And I picture how overjoyed he is to be welcomed in the arms of God and reunited with Omi and Woody and Charlie, the, the dogs that he loves so much. So Uncle Bob, like the words in this song, go in peace, go in kindness, go in love, go in faith. Leave the day, the day behind us, the day is done. Go in grace. Let us go into the dark, not afraid, not alone. Let us hope by some good pleasure, safely to arrive at home. Thank you, Uncle Bob, for being so kind to me and Anthony and our families. Thank you for all the laughter and the education and the wisdom Thank you for letting us get close to you. Thank you for all the beautiful art you gave the world. You know, Pablo Picasso said, your purpose in life is to find your gift, and your mission in life is to give it away. So you served your mission well, Uncle Bob, and put up a heck of a fight that inspired and amazed us all. most of all for making me feel so special ever since I was a little girl. You know that feeling when someone loves you so much that you just, you're just in awe of it and they just surround you with it when they're with you. They can't love on you enough. They, their eyes just sparkle and light up. That's what my Uncle Bob did with me. I'll never be able to thank you enough for that. Peace be with you, Uncle Bob. Please know that we love you and we'll always miss you. Because like this card that I received from my husband's stepdad, Ed, said, Life is a journey of sweetness and sorrow, of yesterday's memories and hopes for tomorrow of pathways we choose and detours we face with patience and humor, courage and grace, of joys that we've shared and of people we've met who've touched our lives in ways we'll never forget. Mm -hmm. God bless you, Uncle Bob. We send you off with our love and our gratitude.
at this point in the service, um, what time is it? I don't know. What's that? 6.37. Um, we do have the repass that starts at, supposedly starts at 7. Um, but I do want to say a final prayer. And I do, we're going to be a little bit late for the repass. That's typical Pentecostal charismatic style. Nobody's ever on time for anything. <laughs> right? Um, but I also, I'm going to switch the order here. I'm going to do a final prayer. And for the sake of time, I'm going to ask for everybody in the family, after this final prayer, we'll stop the transmission. And then I'm, I'm not going to be in the, in the row, but I want Marisol, I want you sitting up there in the front. Because my Aunt Marisol is part of this family. And like I said... My extended family, you all have all I have left. You're very, very special to me. So, she's known my Uncle Bob for since 1967. Um, I'm going to be calling up every, everybody by rows um, to give a fist bump. I know we're in COVID. You don't want to hug. You can give a fist bump, whatever it is, to... Uh, Give condolences to the family, Maria, Valerie, and Gabriela, Destiny, all of you should be there. I'm, I, you guys can, if you want to give me condolences, you can tell me at the repast, but I'm going to be directing traffic from up here, okay? But that's, that's a tradition in, in our church that the, that the family members that have lost their loved one receive those condolences, and we're going to do that in order, so... Um, I guess you have to turn off the thing. But let, let's say a prayer. Father God, I just want to thank you for my Uncle Bob's life. I want to thank you for his legacy, everything that he imparted to us. I want to ask you to bless us, to learn all that he taught us, to treasure art, and treasure especially his artwork, receive everybody's gifts, show constant love, including to the most vulnerable, like children and animals, and always be people who are in communication with you. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Father God, I praise you and I thank you for this time to honor my uncle's memory and to tell him how much we love him. And I thank you for everybody who came today. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank everybody for being in the transmission as well. You all have a blessed, blessed evening. Amen. You are in the transition, transmission.